Welcome to our celebration of one of the 20th century's most remarkable women of faith and action, Catherine de Hewick Doherty. Her life spanned most of that century, starting out in Russia and winding up in the rolling hills of Cumbermere, Ontario, where she founded Madonna House at the invitation of Pope Pius XII. Madonna House began as a secular institute, Pius XII's term to describe lay people who wanted to take permanent vows of service to the Church, and who in his vision were the central hope of the Church's vitality in the modern age. Today, Madonna House is described in Church terms as a lay association of the faithful. It is also a truly astonishing global community of more than 250 mostly young men and women who live out what Catherine called a Nazareth spirituality. In imitation of the ordinary holy ways of Mary, Joseph, and their young son in their Nazareth years, the Madonna House members go about their lives of prayer and service in a network of 22 houses all over North America and throughout the world. Our entry point to this life and this achievement is through Cynthia Donnelly, a playwright formerly of New York and now a resident of Cumbermere's Madonna House. Donnelly has written a lovingly honest one-person play about Catherine called A Woman in Love, which has been performed across North America and abroad. We hope that through the excerpts of Donnelly's play presented here, and through the words of some of the people whom Catherine inspired, that you too will feel blessed by this woman who lived so radiantly among us. When I first heard about Catherine, I had to ask, what relevance does such a life have for young people in a new century and with very different problems? But as I came to know the facts of her life, I realized her life is simply a great story. Catherine was a lover. She fell in love more than once. Many men fell in love with her. She was a single mother, a working woman, a social reformer, and a real beauty who attracted the love of a handsome, successful reporter who basically threw it all away for her. There is something else. Catherine's final love affair was with God, and with God as with humans, Catherine learned to love and to live the gospel without counting the cost, without compromise. She would look to serving the poor and the powerless as her central expression of a loving God burning within her, and she would find that loving God in all those she served. In this new version of troubled times with which we have begun our new century, this post-September 11th era as we now call it, we need to relearn these deep lessons of love. May 17th, 1947. Oh, Jesus. On this first day in Cumbermere, I lift my heart to you in deepest gratitude. For it is through your providence that I have come here. Did you notice the hidden love I had for the beauty of this place? I accept your gift, O oh beloved and all that I am is yours. I have been in love with God since I was six. Here in Cumbermere, so much like my beloved Russia, this journey inward continued. My love and hunger for God became unquenchable. It would consume me. came into this area at the invitation of Bishop, um, Bishop Smith in 1947 with the mandate to do a rural apostolate 
She saw that the need was, first of all, education. So she um, started a library. She also worked as a nurse in the area. She started uh, Red Cross Home Nursing. We had uh, kids come to the house and there were games, recreation, crafts. Clothing was very needed. She begged clothing from all over Canada, distributed clothing. We turned up in our <clears throat> bus in the parking lot at Madonna House with our three little girls. And um, my husband went to try and find someone to tell him we were here and find out what we should do. And the person he ran into on the front steps was an old lady, he said, when he told me later. And uh, he thought she was the cleaning lady. I don't know why, because she said her name was B. And uh, he started a conversation with her. And she said, can I come into your bus and meet your wife and children? And she got up into the bus, and I can remember her, her knee was bothering her at the time, and she um, had to kind of pull herself up as she was getting into the bus. But uh, she came and sat in our bus and just talked about her life in Cambromere, all the babies she delivered, and um, just about God. And we were just um, drawn right in to her into her conversation and into her spirituality already. All of this originated from the presence of God in her. It's, it's like Jesus Christ was involved in all these things. That, that's my, my absolutely main, uh, uh, not impression, but conviction about Catherine Doherty from the first half hour until her death is an extraordinary presence of God in her that covered the world, that touched every person whom she met, but that went across everywhere. People felt it. Catherine had some bad days where she wasn't very saintly. And then she would repent and make amends as best she could. Maybe not right away, but when she began to see things Maybe her anger was too uh, severe, or maybe she was not reflective enough about taking some action. But she would always try to heal the wounds that she caused. I, at times, got fed up with that pattern and didn't see it as being very saintly. But what I do see, because I have to say, in all honesty, that she is a saint. and I. Just go to the words of Jesus. By their fruits you will know them. In the lifetime of most saints, you do not see the kind of fruit that has taken root in, in her lifetime. She was definitely larger than life. A lot of Russians are. They are, they come from a very large country and they have large personalities. They have, um, there's, a, there's a bigness about a Russian. Um, in the sense that they have booming voices and they are uh, quick to act and they have, they're very colorful and they're very, they have incredible imaginations. Uh, Catherine Doherty was, was all of that. There's also a, a different side to the Russian and that is that there's a deep mysticism um, that's involved with, with Russian spirituality. And I think that it, it's that, that, that blend of bigness and deepness um, that characterized Catherine Doherty. And I think it's what made her so appealing to a lot of people. So I went down and there was the bee. She was lecturing. And so I always remember that night because uh, there was a girl got up in a question period and she got up and she described some kind of moral situation that was going on in the office, you know, and uh, what should I do in that situation, uh, um, Baroness? 
And I always remember she said, she said, I'll tell you what to do. You love that person. Love that person. Get to know her and love her. That's all. Don't tell her she's no good. Don't tell her she's doing wrong. Go ahead and love her, right? And that in some ways was an incredible revolution in my, my, my thinking because I'd already been doing a little of it, but I had never really made contact with it. This is really the message of God. This is really God. I was born in the ancient Russian city of Nizhny Novgorod on August 15, 1896. A fair, a great fair teemed outside our window as my mother held me for the first time. Catherine, she said, you were born under the shadow of the cross. Strange words. And these words will come again later, sealing my life to suffering. My mother was beautiful, very independent for a woman in those days. My father was tall and strong, yet tender. He worked for the diplomatic services and we were very rich. I was their first child. <laughs> I was a mixture of things, mostly the extremes of things. I was dreamy, perceptive, stubborn, bossy. I was so passionate, I could fly from love to hate in a second. But my parents' lives were rooted in God. And it was from them that I learned that the whole world was permeated with Him. All life, from the icons that glistened in the corner, to a wooden bowl of borscht, good black bread, to a field that was well plowed, all life, all human life, was holy. I studied French and art, the best schools of Paris and Egypt. And in the summers, my mother would take me on pilgrimages. We would go into the villages to care for the poor. You see, it was from my mother that I learned to see Christ in the poor. 